Hi, it's Tara. I wanted to do this video before I forgot, um, but like two weeks ago, I sampled Le Lion de Chanel, and this was part of the samples that I got from like uh, my purchase uh, like last year. Yeah, last year sometime. I bought like um, one bottle of an exclusive. I forgot which one it was. It may have been beige or it may have been number 18. I think that's the Ambrette one. Anyways, I it was one of those and they gave me a whole bunch of stuff. So I got uh, Le Lion as one of my samples. And um, it's supposed to be the answer to Shalimar by Guerlain, but I have to say that Le Lion is a whole different animal. In fact, if Shalimar is a, a queen, like a Rani, Maharani, um, Le Lion is an actual animal, as in zoo animal. <laughs> this is a ferocious perfume. And yeah, I was a little surprised. Uh, so it, it, the only thing that kind of reminds me of Shalimar is it's a little bit leathery. I mean, it's the leather parts are very leathery and it's very, very tenacious. It, this parts of the stick to your skin, like it sinks into the pores or something. And yeah, it's very strong and very long lasting and tenacious. So what I have to say about this is it doesn't have the softness or uh, as many florals or vanilla as far as I know. This is like a very fierce and uh, very fierce leather. Um, yeah, I know Coco Chanel was Leo for Lion, but I don't know if, I mean, unlike her other perfumes, this really doesn't have the, a lot of the powderiness, the aldehydes, the, the slightly floral stuff, slightly powdery stuff of the other stuff that she has. This is very lean, sort of musk, muscly. It's very muscly and it's very assertive, super assertive. I don't think that there's any, I don't, recall much sweetness in this so it's very lean and strong and powerful um so is it for me i much prefer shalimar so i think shalimar to me is more uh rounded it has the powdery uh vanilla it has the citrus it has a lot of florals that iris or whatever um, that sort of like counteracts the leanness of this. This is like a very serious and intense perfume. Um, it's not something that I would wear for summer or even spring. Um, this is something that is like, it's just, it's just super intense. And, um, it probably, a lot of, I noticed that um, reading Fragrantica that a lot of men really love this. It's like, to them, they just, they love it because of the assertiveness of it. This is not a weak, citified uh, Chanel, uh, like ladylike perfume. Uh, it's not ladylike, it's strictly unisex and it's very powerful. So in that way, I think it's quite successful uh, a lot of people really like it. You have to love leather to like it. It has like other more an animalic notes in it that, um, yeah, it's, it's much more, it's on the more masculine side to me in terms of, I know Shalimar is not really masculine or feminine. There's enough notes on both sides, or I mean, there's enough notes that, um, that both can be satisfied with it, I think. But this one is a little bit more for the people that really love leather and animalics. And it's quite animalic. I was surprised by that. Um, a lot of the Chanel line tend to be very city and oriented. This is more like a, um, I would say that, not that it's not refined, but 
it's not wild, but it's also uh, a different, whole different animal. Yeah. So I think that's very interesting, actually. Um, I love that they're doing, this line has something for everybody. That to me means a really great collection and a really great, um, you know, uh, understanding of, of what people want. Um, you're, it's not all weighted to one side or the other, you know. I think I had this issue against the Dior Privé line when I smelled it side by side against the Chanel line at Neiman Marcus like many years ago. And this is like um, a lot of the old Chanel, a lot of the old uh, Dior Privé line that I had smelled was, have already been like, you know, shuffled out. So that just goes to, I, I remembering my first instinct being that the Chanel line was more about, less about trends. So the Chanel was more like following its own artistic vision. And it, it had a more, like you can imagine Coco Chanel herself, her input was in all of it. You know, it represents a lot of aspects of her vision. Um, whereas the um, the Dior Privé line was more like, you can tell they were just trying to sell like the most they perfume that they can. I, I had that feeling. A lot of that line was very sugary and syrupy and thick. And the compositions themselves were just less sophisticated. You know, they were very like... Mm, they were very, like, they were less mature. I mean, less in, in terms of refinement, sophistication, uh, composition. Uh, I, it seemed like they were quite plain. And, um, yeah, it was like, oh, let's do a, a vanilla, you know, and do like this type of vanilla, like that. It, it really felt like it was in that vein. And then once something is not popular, they just shuffle it out and they do something else. Like, oh, let's get a fresh one in there. Okay, here's Lucky. And then let's do some roses. Oh, here's a bunch of roses. You know what I mean? They were just like, it doesn't seem like a real person's vision was behind it. It seemed like it was more of a, a company a corporation saying, you know, let's do a line, let's sell as much as possible, you know, like that. It just felt like that, more in that vein. And I don't, it just did lack that type of sophistication, um, discernment, you know. Um, it was just like a collection of random scents. Like I didn't feel like there was a running theme or there was any personal, um, that there was anything personal in it whatsoever, you know? Whereas the Chanel ones have like real like associations with Chanel and uh, not just Chanel the person, but with the house itself, which I feel is more personal. And the, the compositions are more, um, uh, they had more to it. There was more substance, whereas I felt like the uh, Dior Privé ones had less thought behind it. It was more of a committee, <laughs> you know what I mean? They wanted to put something together that would sell market well, and that's just my opinion. But anyways, I just thought I'd come to you with this, um, with this uh, review, since it was one of the surprises that I had. Um, I thought I was... Uh, I thought it would be kind of like in line with all the other Chanel's, but yeah, it really stands out. Um, this is really not a safe buy. You would have to go and sniff it out on your own. Um, I like to have it in my collection just because, you know, as a sample, just because it's so unusual and I'm us I'm a Chanel fan uh, of most of their exclusive line. Yeah, so that's my take on it. Have a great day and talk to you later. Bye.